Good morning, gang. Happy Thursday morning. Happy August 1st. Can you believe it's August already? The year is just flying by. Big question. Will you send your kids to war? Simply put. Okay. By now, everybody knows that in the last couple of days that Israel had knocked out the leader of Hamas uh, and knocked out the leader of Hezbollah with strikes on Beirut and strikes in Iran. Okay. Understandable. You want to get rid of terrorists. I'll give you this. 80% of the United States in a recent survey supported Israel, including this guy, okay, <clears throat> in their battle against these heathen terrorists. Now, here's the deal. We have an election coming up if nobody's paid attention. And we have two candidates who have polar opposite opinions on what to do. Okay. Trump being a staunch supporter of Israel, Kamala Harris waffling all over the place, just like her predecessor, trying to play both sides against the middle. Well, you know, we're an ally of Israel, but we, we really need to stand up for the Palestinian people. I hate to tell you this. There's no such thing as Palestinian people because there's no such country as Palestine. Okay. Just saying. You can call them whatever you want because they live in a Palestinian territory. Okay. But the territory got so named because of the people on this made up place. Here's the issue. You know as well as I do, Kamala Harris and the Democrats need a war. Joe wants to be a wartime president. He's proven that. He's trying to get us into wars by proxy all over the, all over the world. But time is running short, and they need a war. Tony Blinken and Lloyd Austin came out yesterday after Iran had said they will retaliate against Israel and said the U.S. will support Israel if they are attacked. What does that mean? Does that mean we're going to send them weapons? God knows we've sent them enough over the course of how long. And some of, well, let's put it this way, some of the Israeli weapons are superior to what we have and a lot of our weapons, they have improved upon, okay? Yeah, I guess we just need to keep the defense contractors going, right? That's pretty much the whole thing. We'll have a war so we can make more military arms, so the defense contractors can make more money, and who cares if we sell it to another country? The U.S. taxpayer is paying for it, right? Well, what are we going to pay for it with at this time? Our money? or our personnel. This is the thing. Don't for a second think that, oh, we'd never send troops to Israel. Because those are probably the same people that thought we'd never send troops to Iraq or Afghanistan. As weak as our military is now, the greatest strength they have in operational readiness is fighting in the Mideast, guys. The troops with combat experience know fighting in the Middle East. They don't know jungle warfare like Vietnam or anything like that. That's not what our troops have participated in. They know Middle East fighting. Ukraine would have been totally different. We don't have a whole lot of experience in urban combat but we have a whole lot of experience in desert fighting. We can go back to Desert Storm. Okay, this is You go back for 30 years, and that's the experience that pretty much anybody and everybody that has combat experience in the military has. Kamala Harris is between a rock and a hard place at this point. She's desperate to keep the 
Muslim vote, you know, I mean, Michigan, Minnesota, uh, she needs to win those states badly. I've said many times, if Trump can win Georgia and Pennsylvania, it's over. Georgia is starting to look like it's in the bag. Uh, Trump's got nearly a five-point lead there. Okay. Again, who knows about polls right now? Who knows about cheating? We've talked about that ad nauseum. Pennsylvania, he leads. Michigan, he's slightly losing by like a tenth of a percent. Minnesota, he's down. Kamala Harris needs to keep those states. She needs that blue wall. She needs, desperately needs to keep Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, and grab Pennsylvania. Now, let me explain something to you about the military. If you go do a study on where people come from that join the military, join, okay? Overwhelmingly, you find people from the Midwest and the South. That is, that is hunting grounds, if you will, for new recruits. Sure, you have people that come out of Utah. Sure, there are some that come out of California. You'll get a few here and there from New England. You get a, a lot from the Plains states, you know, Texas, Nebraska, yada, yada, yada. But the overwhelming majority of them come from the Midwest and from the South. The Blue Wall is in the Midwest. If they go to war, and we've heard for the better part of two years now, including drafting women, that they might reinstate the draft because the military is so low on personnel. Where are they going to get those people? The same place that they want to keep blue. Now imagine this. 80% of the public supports Israel. And somehow we wind up with a war against Iran, supporting Israel, with the president hypothetically saying Kamala Harris gets elected or selected or cheated in, who doesn't stand behind the troops. Think that can't happen? Let's take a look at Vietnam. We were sending troops to Vietnam with rifles and no ammunition. Okay. We didn't care. The government didn't care. They would grab anybody, a warm body, and throw them in as cannon fodder. This is shaping up to be exactly the same thing. You know, it's funny with Biden talking at the LBJ presidential library the other day. And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, you always say you want to be Franklin Roosevelt, the socialist. No, I think you want to be Lyndon Johnson, because you sure parallel him a lot more. Avowed racist. Yes, Joe, you and LBJ, avowed racists. You don't support the military whatsoever, and you only have your personal enrichment in mind in Washington. Yeah, that sounds about equal. So bring in Kamala Harris. Okay. You could say she's racist. I certainly would. Okay. She's the Indian when it's convenient. She's black when it's convenient. At least for those of us who know biology, she's a woman always. Okay. I'm still waiting for her to go up to some transgender conference and say she's a man. <clears throat> she's not Big Mike. But for her own enrichment, hmm. remind me again what accomplishment she has, what she's earned on her own from her own efforts in her life. Giving blowjobs is not considered a giving effort. Okay. Be very wary of what goes on, even before the election. We all know Kamala Harris is 
by default the president right now. We haven't seen Joe other than this LBJ read off a teleprompter speech here, which he still screwed up, since he dropped out. Kamala Harris has paraded around like she is the incumbent. Who's pulling the strings? Could we say Barack Obama? And oh, his hatred of Israel and his Islamic background? If you have to send your kids to fight, if they get drafted, who are they going to fight for? Are they going to support what 80% of the United States fights for, believes in, supports in Israel? Or somehow we, on the precipice of having a president go to war against one of our greatest allies. Kamala Harris won't go to war. Doug Emhoff won't go to war. Doug's kids won't go to war. Yours will. Anybody that hasn't seen that she is a threat, that, well, Kamala Harris is, Joe Biden is, the entire Democratic Party is a threat to peace in the world, is out of their mind. They want war. Trump is out talking about he'll have a peace plan in Ukraine on day one. Trump's out there talking about active things he can do to end this crap between Israel and Iran. The Democrats want to keep it going. They'll talk out of this side of the mouth saying, we want a ceasefire. The actions they do say we want a war. Personally, I'm sick of us being in a war. We've been in a war almost the entire 21st century, and we're a quarter of the way through it. It's time we say enough is enough. Put somebody who's competent in control of this country because the incompetence is going to get a whole lot of us killed. Pinball out.